bit of painting to do. I can do that. I'm See? a brilliant well, painter. Well, there you go. So, well, we are at the top of the hour. This is going to be a five-hour news break. Maybe there'll be a little good news out there. What do you think? I I don't think so. And twin number two said hi to you, and we will be back in five. NPR podcasts are now available on every platform. Check out all our shows at npr.org slash podcasts. That's npr.org slash podcasts. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Janine Herbst. President Trump says he'll give his State of the Union address from a different venue. After House Speaker Nancy Pelosi made it clear to him today, he's not welcome to give the address from the House floor while the government remains partially shut down. Trump, speaking from the White House this afternoon, called Pelosi's decision a great blotch on the country, a horrible mark and a disgrace. She doesn't want the American public to hear what's going on. And she's afraid of the truth. And the super left Democrats, the radical Democrats, what's going on in that party is shocking. It's not clear where or when Trump will deliver his speech. By law, the president may not address a joint session of Congress without both chambers' explicit permission. The Constitution doesn't require that the State of the Union be delivered in the form of a speech. And on Capitol Hill today, furloughed federal workers staged a protest inside a Senate office building demanding an end to the partial government shutdown. Patrick Madden of member station WAMU reports 12 people were arrested. The protest at the Hart Senate building began with 33 minutes of silence to mark the number of days for the shutdown. The group then broke out into chants before being dispersed by Capitol Police. Protesters were not allowed to bring signs into the building, so many wrote messages on styrofoam plates. Mahasin Mohammed, a security guard at a Smithsonian Museum in D.C., used her makeshift sign to ask to go back to work. I couldn't pay my bill. I couldn't send the money to my mom. She's in the hospital. I don't pay my mortgage. I don't have nothing. The rally was organized by labor groups representing federal employees and contractors. For NPR News, I'm Patrick Madden in Washington. The Trump administration is stepping up the pressure on Venezuela's president, Nicolas Maduro, calling him an illegitimate leader and warning his government not to crack down on protesters. The U.S. has now recognized an opposition figure as the interim president, as NPR's Michelle Kellerman reports. An administration official says that all options are on the table if Maduro and his, quote, cronies choose to respond to protesters with violence. President Trump was asked if that means his administration is considering a U.S. military response. When not considering anything, but all options are on the table. Does that mean you're considering those? Which is all options, always. All options are on the table. The Trump administration has taken the unusual step of recognizing the head of the National Assembly, Juan Guaido, as the interim president of Venezuela, and other countries in the region are following suit. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says he'll work closely with him to help the country transition back to democracy. Michelle Kellerman, NPR News, the State Department. And Maduro has responded to the move by the Trump administration by severing ties with the U.S. and expelling U.S. diplomats from the country, giving them 72 hours to leave. You're listening to NPR News from Washington. The Trump administration has told government-funded foster care agencies in South Carolina that they're free to place children only with Christian families. NPR's Tom Jelton says the ruling overturns an Obama administration rule that federally funded foster care agencies can't discriminate on the basis of religion in their placement policies. The ruling concerns Miracle Hill Ministries, a foster care service provider in South Carolina. The agency places children only with families who hold evangelical Christian beliefs. When a Jewish couple asked to take in a foster child, they were turned away. Under federal law, foster care agencies that receive federal funding cannot consider race, color, or national origin when deciding who gets to be a foster parent. The Obama administration added religion to that list. It's that regulation the Trump administration has now overturned, saying that not allowing an agency to work only with like-minded people limits that agency's religious freedom. Tom Jelton, NPR News, Washington. 
The federal government is accusing Oracle of underpaying thousands of female, black, and Asian employees. The Department of Labor says the software maker paid them around 25 percent less than white men for the same work. The department estimates Oracle has around $100 million in government contracts each year. Wall Street higher by the closing bell, the Dow up 171 points, the Nasdaq up 5 points, the S&P 500 also up 5. I'm Janine Herbst, and you're listening to NPR News from Washington. Welcome back to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is five minutes after the hour. Hello there. Welcome back. This is Kat Hobson. You are listening to Paranormal Experience Radio. This is WBHM Digital Broadcasting, and I am having a fantastic time I'm speaking with Ronnie D, who is the owner, the new owner, of Old South Pittsburgh Hospital Paranormal Research Center. And if you're wanting to check out the website, that is www.ospahprc.com. And you would not believe the work that has been going on there. And thank you for doing that, Ronnie. Welcome back. Well, thank you for having me once again. <laughs> well, thanks for being had. So, Oh, absolutely. <laughs> when we talk about your team, these are some very, very dedicated volunteers that have come forward. They're so anxious to help. They're doing such hard labor. And I know most of them. I think that you've got a fantastic team. Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. And uh, dedicated is, isn't even a strong enough word for, for most of the team. Um, yeah, they're, they're just an amazing bunch of people. And some of, some of my team will drive an hour, an hour and a half to get here. Yeah. And um, yeah, they're just, it goes back to that, that desire to be in this building and, and having the building grab you and, and, and bring you in. But uh yeah, Daniel and Darla and Heath and Shane and and Amy and just Ray and I keep uh, Greg and Bryler and everybody. And I know I'm forgetting a bunch of people, but uh, um, Samantha, um, just everybody who comes down and and, and you know what? I, I think one of the reasons why too is we just have a lot of fun. Yeah, we are a very tight team. Um, you, you know, we do a lot of fun things together. You know, they, I, we just had a birthday for me not too long ago that they surprised me with. That was really cool. Um, but like I said, we I think as as we're getting to know each other and work together, and 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 I think we really tightened as a team. Um, you know, and and I do. I owe them so much gratitude for them to be here. I owe them just everything. And um, you know, it, it's it's neat. And uh, some of the things that. I, there's so much ownership that everybody is taking in the building. And, and that's what I think is really neat is, you know, we're, we are tearing down a lot of walls um, because they've got to come down. But what's really neat is that I get really excited. Um, like a good example is, as we pulled out the carpeting and, and underneath the carpeting was the original floors from when the building was first built. And, 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 and it's neat because we all share that. Wow. Like, Oh my gosh, that's so cool. It's there. We tore down some walls, and we're not going to give away the secrets, but we tore down some walls, and we, we found some things in the wall that probably hasn't been seen since the 70s when they did a remodel. Um, and like I said, and the team, when they see that, it, it's you know some of the work is being done, and I'm not here, and, and they fight over each other to see who can send me a picture of what they discovered. <laughs> or, or you know some of them will be like, no, let's wait, you know, let's wait till he's, he's here so we can show him in person. And that's what's really, really unique and really cool about the team that we've kind of assembled is, is that we're all in this together and the love that we all have for one another and for the building is, is second to none. And, and we all get so excited over, you know, like I said, just silly little things. Like when we pull up the carpeting and, and there's the original floor and we're all looking at each other going, oh, that's so cool. Why would they ever cover that? You know, and, and so then we're all chomping at the bit to scrub the floor down and to get it polished and to and to bring out the original floor. And and that's what's really, really just unique about our team is that 
the love that everybody has for one another and for the building is just so uniform to all of us. And, um, you know, one of the things that I'm the outsider, all of these people have worked together. They're all friends. Yes. They, they've all known each other in one way or the other and have volunteered here through Stacey, or, you know, or even back when Cindy and Doug were here. So, you know, they, they all had relationships prior to me purchasing the building. And, um, you know, there, there was a point where I bought the building and, and everybody kind of felt me out, and, you know, and I think Renee was kind of the leader of the pack where, you know, she sat me down, she kind of grilled me, she looked into my soul, she, uh, you know, she, 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 she really was really skeptical of me, and um, I don't know what I did, Renee, to win her over, but uh, I was just myself, and I think that everybody realized that, you know, that I'm the newcomer, but uh, I have as much love for the building as they do. I, I don't have the time that they have in the building, you know, um, and that kind of stuff, but but it's just really, really cool and really amazing to me how every one of them really had opened up their their hearts and their minds to me and, and just accepted me for who I am and what I wanted to do and the visions that we had of the building. And, uh, you know, Renee and I were just talking about this today. We were, we were sitting down talking and, you know, her and I are very, very similar people. And um, it's really neat to find somebody who is very similar to me. Her and I can finish finish each other's sentences. Um, we were we were both working on one of the walls and one of the one of the um, observation rooms, and 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 all of a sudden I, I said something out loud, and she looks at me and she goes, "Get out of my head!" And I'm like, "What?" She goes, "I was just thinking about that darn thing too." And um, <laughs> I was like, "Really?" She says, "Pretty much word for word, what you just said is what I was just about ready to say to you." So it's really it's really neat that her and I are, are, are so close and that we have the same vision. And, and you, you know, there's some, there's some things that happened here just recently that, that really brought her down. They really brought me down too. And, and, and what was really neat about her and I talking was, is we lift each other up when we have a bad day or, or something goes really bad or something goes really wrong. You, you know, she cries on my shoulder. I cry on her shoulder and, and, and it's just so comforting to have somebody like Renee, who uh, she's just really, really just an amazing person. I, I mean, she's she's not a coddler. She's she tells you like it is, and sometimes <laughs> it'll hurt your feelings. She but, is uh, a truth teller. But but you know what? She, she's just got a heart of gold, and um, I would be nothing without her. Um, I, it, it just wouldn't happen. And uh, like I said, for them to just open up their hearts and and, and you know, and she cooks. She brought me dinner tonight. You know, just just the, the really little things that mean so much that, you know, that hopefully everybody out there is listening and, and she's listening and, and just realize how grateful I am to her for, you know, for everything. Just just everything from, you know, our Thursday night dinners at her house to, uh, you know, the lousy music that she sometimes plays when we're ripping down walls. <laughs> um, but, but all of that, it, you know, it, it's just Renee is just one of the most one of the most unique special people I've ever met in my entire life. And, and, and I'm very, very honored to be her friend. And uh, I'm very honored that she's, she's, she's part of the team. And, 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 and I've never met a woman who has been able to steal my heart as quick as she has. And, uh, and, and I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful for her and, uh, and for her to assemble the team and for her to give me the chance to, uh, to prove myself and to prove that I'm as sincere as that, uh, you know, that, that I'm, that I'm talking about. And, uh, yeah, she's good. She's really good. She's a good person. And, uh, and I'm proud of that. Well, she loves that structure. She absolutely, absolutely does. So you seem to be pretty much what it needed. And if she accepted you you like that, she she knows it too. She did. and, And she, that was one of the things that, you know, she checked me out. And, and I think we mentioned this earlier on the broadcast, but, you know, she just, like I said, she just looked at me and she goes, this was meant to be. She, she just, she really believed in her heart that, that, that we were all being, I think she used the word groomed. Um, we were all being groomed for this day. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what I believe in when it comes to, you know, that kind of a thing, but, you know, the, just the experience of being here and, 
this is something that really fulfilled me as a person. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of neat because as a person I'm developing with owning this building and with the relationship I'm having. So it's much bigger than just owning a building. It's me for me personally. Um, I'm growing and developing it.